and the B was our base, and then our exponent was X, and X is the number that we had to plug in like a negative two for, a negative one, a zero, a one, or a two. So let's kind of refresh in the spot that says exponential form. Can you please write in this formula? And I'm going to go through and I'm going to explain everything to you. So first of all, reminder that A is the y-intercept. V to the power of x minus h, this moves it, like if there's a number after x, plus or minus, that's going to move on the x-axis, so left or right. And because it's um, like in vertex form with our parabolas, that was in parentheses and it was the opposite sign, this is going to be the same thing. This K moves it up or down on the y-axis. So this HK is going to tell us how it moves. So we now have this, you know, J-shaped curve or L-shaped, and it's going to be moving based on the H and the K. The H goes left or right. The K goes up or down. A is the y-intercept. So all of these features can help us figure out how to write an equation and then also how to graph it. So I'm going to turn it it's easier. Okay. So now let's talk about the first view. Carl, I'm going to tell us to you after class. Um, there's nothing after the x, okay? But this plus 1, that's my k. k means that it moves up or down. So... Determine how the following graphs shift. So if this is called my parent function, just like the, the normal graph that we were used to seeing with the y-intercept of 1, then when it has a plus 1 at the end, it's going to shift up 1. That's all we're going to do. There's no number after the x, so it's not going to go left or right. That 1 is the only thing. I want to remind you on B that the um, x plus 1 is it's going to be the opposite sign. So I put it in parentheses right here to kind of like trigger your brain like, oh, the sign's going to be the opposite. Kevin, I'll see you. And so here we've got shifting one to the left. Even though it's a plus one, it's going to go left or right, but it's plus one goes one to the left. And then C, just the three is what we're looking at. It's going to shift down three. Because it's a negative three. And K is the up and down. Right. Yep. So that like the answer, yeah, these are the answers. Because the question oh. is, how do the following graphs shift? So you're just describing how they're going to be changed. Is that just going to be our lesson describing? No, we have more. It depends on what we get to, you know. On D, the X has a parenthesis. So is that going to be my H or my K? Is that negative 3, my H or my K? Okay, we'll look up at the top of your paper. What letter, H or K, is right next to the exponent? H. H. H goes left or right. It is a negative 3. So this is going to be my H. 
but it's going to be opposite sign. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not up. Excuse me. Right. Because it's the opposite sign. It's not... The x minus h, that's the exponent, that is always going to be the opposite sign of what you see. E, we've got a lot going on for E. Tell me what's happening with the negative 4 and what's happening with the positive 5. Uh, negative 4 is a g, and then the 5 is the k. Yep. And then you're going to want to flip the negative 4. So it's going to be going up, or no, it's going to be going right through, or 4. And 5 means up or down. On five, you're right, you do not. Well, we're going slow, and we have nine of them to do, so. KF. There's my H. There's my K. H always moves, remember? Left or right? K goes up or down? Down. All right, so on my negative one, is that going to be... Neg, is it going to be? It's going to be negative one. Just told I just said it. <laughs> negative one, which means to the left. What about my three? Down. That's all we're doing for this. <laughs> Point out, please, that three is my y-intercept. A number three also means that it's skinny. Is there anything happening with an H or a K? So we're not going to do any movement. So a skinny parabola, we know what that looks like. But how about a skinny J-shaped? It's just going to be stretched. Skinny expo exponential graph is the word skinny is another like way to, like you're stretching it to make it longer. Okay, what about this negative two in front for H? What does negative mean? Downward. 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 Two means it's also going to be skinny. But it looks like this, skinny like that, like stretched oh. like that. Uh. On I, my one half is my Y intercept. Is that skinny or fat? fat. fat. So it's gonna be wide, Ooh. wide, ooh. X minus 1, that's my H. 3 is my K. Tell me what's going to happen with my H and my K. Right, three. right 1. 3 up. Um, well, here's the deal. This is my... I'll do in black my, um, like, normal... Okay, like that. So now if I'm going to shift, let's do a different color. If I'm going to go right one and three up, it's going to be like three up and right one. Er. <sighs> Totally messing it up. Like that. So you're shifting one up, right one and three up. Okay, so we'll probably just be able to do number one and that's it. So for number one, this two to the x is your parent function. 
it looks all normal. I'll do it in black, I guess. My Y intercept is one. No, I can't because then the screen won't show everything. How is your Y intercept one? Because the parent function always has a Y intercept of one. One times, one times two to the x, a times b to the x, remember? So if there's no number in front of b, you assume it's a one. Where's the b in there? The two. But in form, you said that the a is a y-intercept. Yeah, my y-intercept here is one. There's like a number one here. Since there's no number, we say it's a one. Oh, okay. 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 So now that's my black parent function. Tell me what's happening with my H and my K. Here is my red. Let's do blue. X take away one minus two. H, K. What's happening with my H and my K here? Right one up two or down two. Okay, this is something I'm just going to give you. This is the table of values for a parent function. We, we graphed this one yesterday. So that table of values that I just made is my black parent function. So if I need to shift right one and down two, every single dot is going to also shift right one and down two. Right one, down two. Right one, down two. Right one, down two. This purple, is this one right here? All I did is I followed my directions. I said to do right one, down two. So I had my black and I went to purple. Right one, one to the right, down two. So black became purple. My new y-intercept is negative 1.5 in purple. My horizontal asymptote is now this line right here, this y equals negative two. It cannot go below this like imaginary fence line. So what I'm doing today is I'm taking graphs and I'm shifting them and moving them right a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit. That's what this lesson is. My domain is all, all real numbers. And my range is gonna be that any number bigger than negative two. Bigger than my horizontal asymptote. Bigger than my imaginary fence. Okay. This black table of values was what we did for number one on yesterday's lesson. Okay. Y equals two to the X. So what I want you to do, let's stop for a second. All right, so now we're on number two. And on number two, I'm going to use the same numbers for x that I was using for everything. So I'm gonna do negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And I think you guys can see that okay, yeah. <laughs> all right. Those like the universal x? Yeah, those are the universal numbers that we use for all sorts of graphing. It's just the basics. So I'm going to plug in my numbers in for my exponent. So 1 half to the negative 2 power is going to change. And here's how. Whenever I have a negative exponent, my you know, number would go down to the denominator. Or if it started in the denominator, it would go up to the numerator. Negative exponents have the power to move numbers and make fractions. But since I have a fraction, what's going to happen is it's going to become this. You're going to flip the fraction, and then it's going to become a positive exponent, too. 
So the negative exponent, negative 2, flips the fraction, and then it becomes a positive 2. So now it's 2 squared minus 3. What is 2 squared minus 3? 1. One. One. Let's do the table of values, and then let's graph them all, okay? So now let's do again 1 half to the negative 1 power going to flip and become 2 over 1 to the positive first power. Min minus 3. Well, 2 to the first power is 2. What's 2 minus 3? Negative 1. Okay, so that's just going to be negative 1. Okay. 1 half. Um, to the zero power. You don't need to flip because it's not negative. But what's anything to the zero power? Do you remember? One. One, one. one take away three. Good. Well, I see a pattern. Wait, never mind. One. One half to the one. Well, anything to the first power is itself. So it's like a half, take away three. 50 cents, take away 3. Negative 2.5. You guys want to do decimals? No, no, no. Just 2. You want to make it 2 and 1 over 2? No, no. I think decimals. I think decimals is easier, and so... Yeah, same here. <clears> okay. <throat> hey, 1 half squared, so a 2 to the, sec to the second power, minus 3. Well, that means that the numerator gets squared and the denominator gets squared. 1 squared over 2 squared. They both get raised to the second power when you do fractions, which is 1 fourth take away 3. Why? Why? Because 1 to the second power and 2 to the second power. They both get raised. Oh, God. And you could do 1 half times 1 half. What's 1 half times a half? A quarter. 1 fourth. There, so there's a fourth also. So you have two ways of doing it. But I have a, what, 25 cents, take away $3. Negative 2.75. Negative 2.75. All right, a couple things we need to talk about. Anytime you have a zero comma something, that's your y-intercept. Okay? So my y-intercept is going to be 0, 0 comma negative 2. And then go ahead and graph all your order pairs. All right, negative 2, comma 1. Negative 1, negative 1. Zero, negative 2. 1, comma, negative 2.5. 1, and then negative 2.5. 2, and then down 2.75. <clears throat> All right, so connect the dots. La, 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 la. I made it super thick line. It approaches the negative 3 line, but it never touches it. Okay, the horizontal asymptote is, what is the line that it approaches, but it never touches? Negative 3. Okay. I don't think I need to be writing so thick anymore. Domain. Where, I mean, will it hit all numbers positive and all numbers negative? Like, will it just go on forever? Yes. This will yeah. rise, but the higher it goes, the wider it gets. And yeah. eventually, like, forever from now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be all real numbers, like that, your special R. Special R. And then um, range. So range means what is the like bottom number and then it's going to be all things greater than it because the graph is going upward. So it'd be like, you know, it's going to be above this, right? What number is that? Negative y. y is greater than or equal to negative 3. 
Remember the whole solid line, dotted line? This is a solid line. It's going to always be a solid line. So that's why I put greater than or equal to, because it's a solid line. If it were a dotted line, then you would just put greater than and no line underneath. But we're not dealing with dotted lines with this lesson at all. Questions on this? So you're basically graphing um, with an extra level of difficulty. That's what we're doing today. Table of values, same thing. All right, last, I'm not having you worry about growth factor and, um, and behavior because that's Algebra 2 curriculum, so we won't get there. Why don't we just start learning it so we can be advanced? Because it's not worth it. I'd rather you master the basics. All right, here we go. Um, same order pairs, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Great. Okay. So this takes extra... Well, here's the deal. We just did one half to the negative second. Look above on number two. We just did one half to the negative one, one half to the zero, one half to the one. Now we have to do, multiply it by two. That two in front, that's my A. There's my B. This is my K. There is no H in this problem. Huh? If there were a number after x, that would be your h. This time there's none. Okay. All right. <clears throat> one half to the negative second. What was it? Four, right? Do you guys remember that? Look at number two right above it. One half to the negative second. Wasn't it four? Okay. So we're going to do this. Two times four minus four like that. And I got four from, I mean, I just did the math last problem. Why am I going to do it again and waste my time? Use the same basics. Okay, eight, take away four. All right, what was one half to the negative one? Two. So two times, here's the two, take away four. Right? Four minus four. Zero. Um, what was zero? One. Oh, so, so hold on. Two times one minus four. Two take away four. Okay. Um, one. One half to the first power. What was it? One half to the first power. One half. One half. Two times one half minus four. So half of two is one. One minus four, negative three. What was one half squared? One-fourth. Two times one-fourth minus four. <clears throat> What's two times a fourth? What's one-fourth doubled? One-half. A half. One-half minus four. Negative 3.5. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's graph them all. Let's do, okay, negative 2, comma, 4. Negative 2, up 4. Negative 1, comma, 0. Zero, comma, negative 2. Um, 1, comma, negative 3. 2, comma, negative 3 and a half. Right in the middle there. Okay. Draw your shape. 
it gets so close to negative 4, but it never touches. So that negative 4, that we're going to be using a lot. My y-intercept, it hits at negative 2. My horizontal asymptote is that number that it gets so close to but never touches, like the boundary line, the fence, the invisible fence. Four. Negative 4. Domain is always all real numbers. Range is what? Good. Okay. Perfect.